So I work at a car dealership where I mainly wash cars and do deliveries for people who buy new cars. So on this particular delivery, it was late, around 6 or 7 p.m., and probably the last car of the day for me. So as most of my co-workers were knocking out, I had maybe four other people with me who worked night shift. As I was finishing up the washing pot, I saw that I needed to get this car gassed up at a gas station right down the road. It was getting dark out, and I was in a not so good area, so I wanted someone to come with me to fill it up. But sadly, everyone was either leaving or working on their own deliveries, so I had to man up and go on my own. Now if I hadn't already said it, this is my first job, and one of my first deliveries at night, ironically. Me being me, I took a small blade with me that he would typically use to get stickers and glue off windows. So as I approached the gas station, it was really dark with only a few lights, lighting every other gas pump up. And of course, I took the lit lane. This is where things take a dark turn. So usually you would go inside to give the cashier a slip for the brand new car you need to fill up with gas. And as I was walking in, I saw a middle-aged man who looked homeless start to look at me in the car I just exited. Now, I didn't think anything of it, so I went inside and gave the cashier the slip. But before going back, I saw the man was now approaching the car was on. So I casually walked outside, trying to ignore that he was staring at me blankly. He then walked right next to me and asked, Hey kid, mind if I get a ride? I then replied, No, sorry, we're not allowed to give people rides. He then asked me again, totally ignoring what I just told him. Can I get a ride in your car? I need to go somewhere where you can meet my other friends. That made my heart drop. Uh, no sir, again, sorry but I cannot do that. And as this was all happening, I was firmly holding the little knife in my pocket, while outside alone with this person. The man then proceeded to take a knife out of his jacket. So you're going to take me or what? He said with a low voice. That's when I knew what I had to do. Being me, I didn't try to fight him, as his knife was considerably bigger than mine, by 80%. So I said, yeah sure, I'll take you. Just let me fill her up all the way. He didn't ease up, still holding the knife firm. So I then said, okay, get in. And as he was about to open the door, I slammed the gas and floated away. Now the story doesn't end there. He then somehow managed to find out where I work. And then we all had to go to the police. They arrived and the man was arrested. But who knows what the sick bastard would have done to me if I would have let him in. And luckily, I was fast enough to not get the car was washing damaged at all by him. I later quit the night shift and started working daily hours. Haven't had anything happen since. I did my basic military training at Fort Leonard Wood in Missouri. Our barracks were old, dating to around the 1950s and 1960s. Every night, a number of recruits were assigned fire guard duty, which was essentially trying to stay awake for an hour and mopping the floor or buffing it until the next soldier came on duty. The fire guard post for my platoon was at the end of the long hallway, directly under the set of speakers suspended from the ceiling. Whenever the drill sergeants made an announcement, you'd hear them through the speakers. This was how they communicated reveal and other instructions where they had to talk to the whole building at once. Usually, these were communicated in blistering shouts, rendered staticky and nearly unintelligible as they blurred through the ancient sound system. One night about halfway through basic, with sleep deprivation really hitting hard by this point, I was sitting in a chair under the speakers, trying to stay awake. The speakers crackled to life, and I immediately perked up. Unusual for an announcement this time of night, but it wasn't outside the realm of possibility. The voice was soft, barely above a whisper. A woman's voice. Private, get everyone outside, right now. The comm line remained open, a low hum hissing through. The voice again. Right now, private, everyone outside. Weird. Not that it was a woman's voice. It was a good basic training and we had a couple of female drills, but for it to come across so softly was very strange. When the brown rounds used the intercom, it was at full shouting voice. I headed down the length of the hall to where second platoon had a fire guard on duty, similarly situated. Asked him if he had heard anything, got a negative response. I made a decision I'd chalk it up to my imagination and tiredness and not risk having the entire barracks furious at me for disturbing their sleep in error. If it was one of the drill sergeants messing with me and I got in trouble for not waking everyone up, at least I'll be the only one getting smoked. 
Nothing happened the rest of the night, and I put it out of my mind, until the very end of basic, when we had our three-day field training exercise. We made it through, and the drill started treating us like real humans. Almost. As we completed the last day of exercise, which was a near-live fire night march to a tech scenario, we all gathered around the fire. The drills got to talking, then got to telling ghost stories about the base. My drill, Parada, a male, told the story of the first female drill sergeant on Fort Leonard Wood. Can't remember when it was, 70s, 80s, but it was decades ago. Apparently she faced a lot of pressure and harassment, as you can imagine. It was unrelenting and harsh, and apparently she couldn't take it. She'd hung herself from exposed water pipes, using her belt. A few years later, they plastered over the exposed pipes, so they could mount speakers there. I work in a retail store, I won't mention the name, but we sell sports merchandise and jerseys. Our pretty usual customers are lots of teenagers in the mall, at lunch break, and all the men who like to talk about the old players from their childhood, the occasional immigrant I can't really communicate with. So I smile and nod. My usual shifts are in the morning, from opening to 2pm, when someone else takes over. I usually work alone for most of my shift, until the next person comes in with an hour left in my shift. Mondays are the only days I close. I'm there from 5 until closing at 9 alone, desperately seeking entertainment. Usually, I can stream a sports game on my phone since the store becomes pretty dead after 7 and the mall is almost silent by 8. Last Monday was like any other. I showed up for my shift, took over from the last guy and walked around the store for 3 hours. At 8, I went behind the counter to watch a basketball game. About 20 minutes later, a guy walked in and started looking around. I walked over to him and gave him my usual pitch, just letting him know about some sales and discounts we have. He didn't even look at me. After a moment of silence, I just said, let me know if you have any questions or need help. And with that, I went back to my counter. After keeping an eye on him without being too obvious, this guy made me pretty uncomfortable. I've had to deal with some uncomfortable customers in the past. Angry people, a couple of drunks, and one of our customers have dementia. But this guy just made me uneasy, but I can't explain why. After an uncomfortably long browsing at the store, the man started to walk out. I called out for him to have a nice night and take care. He turned to look at me for the first time. First thing I noticed was his eyes. They were big, pupils dilated, and very focused on me. I felt he stare like a beam, and this made me squirm. He didn't say anything, just stared. Eventually, he left and disappeared out of view into the almost empty mall. I thought of calling mall security, but the mall was about to close by then, and it wasn't a huge concern. Nine o'clock came around, finally, and I got ready to close. I shut the gate halfway and went to get my jacket from the back and turned off the lights. As I was walking close to the gate, I saw him standing off of one side. I nervously began to close the gate and duck under. As soon as my back turned towards him, I heard him move. I turned around to see him running full sprint towards me. I quickly ducked back under the slammed gate. He was trying to pull it up while trying to reach and grab my jacket. I couldn't lock the gate from the inside, so I reached for a pole that I had used to pull the gate down and jammed it in at the top so that the gate couldn't be lifted. I backed up from the gate so he couldn't touch me and that's when I got a better look at him. His eyes were even wider than before and even crazier. His mouth was twisted into a sick grin. He was snoring like a rabid animal and gnashing his teeth. I dashed to the counter to get the number for security. I called and no one picked up. My next thought was to call the police. They told me they'd be there shortly and to stay somewhere safe. I stayed behind the counter, watching the men try to get in from the gate. After what felt like forever, I heard the police shouting from down the hall at the man. He turned to the voices and looked back at me before turning and running the opposite direction. The stay he gave me before he left was pure hatred and chilled me to my core. Two officers chased the man while one stayed back to talk to me. I removed the pole from the gate and let him in. After I told him what happened, he escorted me to my car. The man was arrested later that evening. They had found him in the forest near the mall, living in a makeshift shelter with basic belongings as well as merchandise he had stolen from the mall. He had been living there for the summer months and regularly visited the mall at night. Other mall employees had filed complaints, but security could not escort him out. 
I told my manager what happened, but since he was locked up, there was no risk of him returning to the mall. I still don't like to work alone, especially my evening shifts. I usually try to keep as busy as possible or call someone, but I still keep myself watching nervously for his twisted face lurking outside the store.